There's nothing wrong with including a collection parameter in your function. However, functions in Kotlin do provide an additional piece of functionality that can satisfy this use case and provides a little additional flexibility. Now to demonstrate why this might be interesting to us, let's look at an example. So let's say we want to call say hello and we'll pass in our greeting, but then we don't want to pass in any interesting things in this case. Well, because of the way that this function is currently defined, we have to pass in the second argument. So in this case, if we wanted to pass in no items, we would have to pass in an empty list, which isn't really a big deal, but it's also not the most flexible way of handling things. So let's take a look at an alternative means of achieving this functionality. If we come up here to our say hello function, we're going to modify this second parameter so that it is a var arg parameter. Var arg is a keyword in Kotlin that essentially represents a variable number of arguments. So in this case, instead of taking a list of string, we'll define a var arg of string. This tells the compiler that we're going to take a variable number of string arguments after the initial greeting argument to this function. So now if we try to pass something in to say hello, we'll first pass in our greeting. And now we don't actually have to pass anything in after the initial argument. This is because the var arg parameter will essentially be treated as an array of whichever type it's used to specify. So in this case, items to greet is now an array of type string. So if we don't pass any items after the greeting, it will be treated as an empty array. If we did want to start to pass items, we could do that by separating them with commas. So we could say Kotlin, and now this would be an array of size one. But where the real flexibility comes is we can now start to define many argument values here. And so now all of those arguments that are passed in will be grouped together, treated as an array. And so in our function implementation, we can still iterate over all the elements in that array. So if we now run this, we should get the same output as before. So by using our var arg parameter, we've eliminated the need to always pass in a value after the initial greeting argument. It lets us have greater flexibility because it will support zero, one, or any other number of argument values to be passed in. Now it's very convenient to be able to pass multiple arguments to this var arg parameter. However, you're usually not going to be hard coding those arguments in manually during compile time. More likely, you're going to get a array of values from a network request or a database, and then you're going to want to pass those in. So you might think that it would be as simple as passing in an array after that initial greeting. So let's try that. We could change list of to array of, and then after our greeting, we'll pass in interesting things. Uh-oh, unfortunately, this does not work. And if you look at the error, you'll see it requires string found array of string. So how do you actually pass in an array of existing values to this var arg parameter? Well, you can do that with the spread operator. And all the spread operator is, is applying the asterisk before the array variable when you pass it in as an argument value. So now if we hit run, we'll see that the compiler is now accepting that array and we are iterating over each item in that interesting things array. So this is how you can pass in an existing collection as a var arg parameter. 
Another really interesting and powerful feature with Kotlin functions are named arguments. Now let's take a look at an example of what named arguments provide to us. We'll start by clearing out our main function. And then we're gonna define a new simple function that will take a greeting and a name and then print that out. So now when we want to call this new greet person function, we can say greet person, hi, and then I'll use my name here. Now, this is fine and it's very easy to understand because the IDE is helping us and showing, okay, this is the greeting argument, this is the name argument. However, if you were in a code review, you might not be able to know exactly which order these arguments are supposed to be passed in. Also, if you wanted to modify the function signature of greet person down the line, you'd have to make sure that these are in the same order because since they share the same type, you could mix that order up without getting any type of compiler error. Now, what named arguments allow us to do is specify which parameter this argument value is going to be used for. So what does that actually look like in practice? Well, it looks like defining the name of the parameter and then an equal sign. And then here we can say name equals and so now we're saying very explicitly, assign hi to greeting and mate to name. The cool thing that this allows us to do is actually mix up the order of these arguments. So now we can actually pass the second parameter first and the first parameter second. So now we could actually theoretically modify the signature of Greek person, changing the order of these parameters and it wouldn't impact the invocations of that function. Kotlin allows us to take this flexibility one step further by leveraging default parameter values. So once again, let's look at our greet person example. So here we are now able to pass the arguments in whatever order we want if we're using named argument syntax. But what if we wanted to pass name first and then not even pass in the greeting? Well, now we get an error because it says no value passed for parameter greeting. So as greet person is currently defined, it must take both arguments, even if they are in a mixed up order. Default parameter values allow us to change that. It allows us to tell the compiler what the default value should be if none is specified. So for greeting, we could provide a default value of hello. And for name, we could provide a default value of Kotlin. You'll see now, greet person can be called by only specifying a single argument value. And if we run this, we'll see it's going to say hello Nate. So it's getting the default greeting value, and then it was using the value for the name that we passed in. Now, because both arguments have defaults, we could actually call this without passing any arguments in. And if we run it now, we'll see it's using both defaults and prints out hello Kotlin. Now this becomes a really powerful feature because now we can not only mix up the order in which we pass arguments, but we don't even have to pass all of them in. This actually allows us to replicate functionality of the builder pattern without actually having to write getters and setters and have private constructors and all of that. We can configure and reuse functions and objects by leveraging these default values and the named argument syntax. While default parameter values, named argument, and var arg parameters are really convenient and flexible and powerful, they do have limitations as well. So I want to illustrate one of those limitations. So we're going to go back to our say hello function. Let's redefine our interesting things array. And so now if I want to invoke say hello, and I want to pass things in order with the greeting and then the interesting things, I can do that no problem. 
And if I run this, we'll get our three lines of output. And so now, what if we wanted to use named argument syntax? Well, we could do that as well. Greeting equals hi. However, as soon as I add the named argument syntax to the first parameter, I get this error saying mixing named and position arguments is not allowed. So this is one of those limitations. As soon as you use named argument syntax for one argument, everything that follows that must also be named. So in this case, I could fix this by saying items to greet equals, and now I can run this again, and I'll get the desired three lines of output once again. Now I could mix these up though, And because both of them are using named argument syntax, there are no problems here. And once again, we could run this and we would get our desired output.